stripping, grabbing. He used to have his guys hold my guys, oh. souffle them, oh. pull them down, rake them down. I was under orders from the head coach to help his guys get better. Illegally. <laughs> so when the offensive line went against the defensive line, it was a war. Who won the war? Well, you know who won the war, the defense. The offensive line won the war. You've heard him complaining, crying almost about, we did this, we did that, they were cheating. We won the war because we cheated. But we clearly won the war. If, if we hadn't won the war, do you think he'd be complaining so much? Joe Schaffeld and Neil Zambukas are two very different men. They've even been compared to the odd couple. On the field, these opposites came together in working towards the same goal and created a powerful force and lasting legacy that is still alive today. Joe is uh, one of the most unique guys that has ever coached at the University of Oregon. I think his legacy will live forever. If uh, you played for Joe, um, you were kind of separated, I think, from the other guys in the team. He took a real pride in that. Probably more importantly, just the way he treats people is the one thing I really learned from Joe. Coach Zoomer has probably had the biggest impact on my professional career of any coach that I ever played for. Neil Zimbukas' legacy will be critically important uh, for historians, if you will, in the uh, success on and off the football field of Oregon football and Oregon athletics. And I give a lot of credit to Zoomer. You know, and, and if you look at, if, if you ever talk to any of his former players, they all love him. From high school on, my dream was to coach at the University of Oregon. And uh, once I had a chance to come to the University of Oregon, I didn't want to leave because this is my home. Uh, family is here, uh, alumni, friends, coaching staff, etc. And I've always enjoyed the University of Oregon. Coach Brooks, during your first year as the football coach at the University of Oregon, you hired Joe Schaffeld as your defensive line coach. 18 years later, when you moved on to the NFL, Joe was still on your staff. Joe uh, really was one of the most important people on my staff. Uh, we could go into a high school, he would know the vice principal, the principal, the secretary. We'd be walking down the hall to the coach's office. We'd have to stop and talk to the janitor. And simply put, Joe knew everything about higher education and secondary education in the state of Oregon. And he was well respected for not only his football knowledge, but who he was and the type of person he is. Anyone's life that was touched by Joe, uh, these people remember it. Uh, it's just really neat to uh, meet a guy, uh, Joe was there a long time, to meet someone who played football at the University of Oregon, you can always say, hey, did you know Joe Shaffield? And they'll always have something nice to say about Joe. Or you meet a, uh, a coach, a high school coach that had been around for a long time, uh, always knows about Joe, they always have something good to say about Joe, because he's a great human. Joe was uh, a great, great role model for me. Um, particularly in the way he treated people and his players and, and I found out how to motivate young men through basically caring about them. You, that you could work them hard, uh, get after them on the practice field, but as long as you were willing to put your arm around them after the day was over that they'd run through a wall for them. Somewhere along the way on, the, on a larger scale you realize that the grass isn't greener. This is a great place to live, it's a great place to raise a family. But more importantly, there's great people here. I really found a home here and friendship. And I, I wanted to stay throughout my coaching career with those friends and to end my time as a coach at the University of Oregon. Zoomer uh, is really one of the more interesting guys that I've ever had on, on my staff. He was multi-talented. He was one of the most organized guys I've ever had. And that's why he became my assistant head coach because he did all of my busy work and, and all of the budgets and all of that kind of thing and he was terrific at it. He also uh, was a very polished recruiter. The parents would love him in the home and he would convince the parents to send their son to him and then he'd get him on the field and just rip him and chew him up and, and be gruff and, and, and tough. Uh, he was as fundamental a coach as I've been around. He was intellectual and he cared a great deal about his players. They knew he cared about 
their progress off the football field as well as on it. He was so demanding on the players, you know, you could, you could drive your man back and stuff him on his back and get a minus because you step with the wrong foot. So what he taught me without even, you know, really specifying what he was teaching me was attention to detail. And, uh, you know, at Oregon, I was a center guard. And then when I went to the pros, a week into my pro career, I ended up as a tackle. So what happened then was I had to draw back on all the skills that Zoomer had taught me. Because when everything gets bad, you always come back to fundamentals. Uh, Zoom had the biggest impact on me of any of the coaches I played for. That's probably the best thing I did was work under him. I know it's hard to believe that. Uh, but because he was so thorough and so demanding, I haven't faced any obstacles since I started coaching that I hadn't been trained to deal with. And I give a lot of credit to Zoomer. He, he put a lot on his back and carried it very well. He really did. Joe and Zoomer had long and meaningful careers as Duck coaches at Oregon. Joe for 24 years and Zoomer for 27. In this time, they were not only outstanding football coaches, they were true leaders of men, instilling long-lasting values in the athletes they coached.